Hey, this video is meant for my concepts of Algebra 2 students. Um, we have a quiz coming up on Thursday over sections 5.3 through 5.5. Hopefully this um, gives you a good review for that quiz. Um, there are three sections to this video. The first section is on just factoring. So the, the problem is going to say factor. So here's our first expression, uh, trinomial, x squared minus 3x minus 28. Notice that there is no a. Okay, so that's something to, there's no a. So really our focus is solely on C, so no A. So what we're going to do is we're going to circle the C, and we're going to say, okay, C is negative. Negative means different signs. So when I draw my two parentheses, I'm going to put different signs, 1 plus 1 minus, different signs. Now to get X squared, we need X and X. And remember, no space because there's no A. And now we just look at 28, the factors of 28. And we get 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 3 no, 4 and 7, 5 no, 6 no, 7 already there. So we're done. Here's all the factors. Now, we have a negative 3 in the middle, and our signs are different, which means subtraction. Subtract to get 3. Well, I look here. 4 and 7 subtract to get 3. Now, my 3 is negative, so I need my bigger number to be negative. So my 7 is negative, the 4 is positive. So here's your answer. Here are your two factors. Now, you can always check. So remember, check by FOIL. You can always check. So if we do the first, that's x times x. That's x squared. Then the outer, x times negative 7 is negative 7x. And then the inner, 4, x, 4 and x is positive 4x. And then the last, 4 and negative 7, negative 28. We combine the middle terms to get x squared, negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3x. And that's exactly what you start with. So you know that your two factors are correct. Okay, here is our, our next factor problem. Here's our expression, x squared plus 15x plus 56. Again, let's say there is no a, which is good. If there's not an a, we don't have to worry about it as much. So we look at c here, and we say, oh, it's positive. Positive c means the same signs. So we must look at that b to determine what those same signs are going to be. And they are going to be two positives. So plus, plus x squared is x and x, and now I need the factors of 56. 1 and 56, 2 and 28, 3 no, 4 and 14, 5 no, 6 no, 7 and 8, and then 8 is up there, so we're done. Now, our signs are the same, so we're going to add to get 15. I think it's 7 and 8. Since the signs are the same, it doesn't matter where they go x plus 7, x plus 8. And again, you can FOIL, and you should get what you started with. Okay, here's our next problem we'll take a look at. This problem is um, 6x squared plus 28x minus 10. And I say, uh-oh, I have a a value. So the first thing I'm looking for is a common factor. 6, 28, and 10, I believe we're all divisible by 2. So that's your common factor. So you're going to pull that common factor out, and then we're going to write what we're left with so that if I was to multiply by 2, I get what I started with. Well, I think this is 3x squared. This is a 14x, and that's a minus 5. Okay? So we pulled out the common factor, and now 3, 14, and minus 5. Here are the, um, here's the new trinomial we have to look at. All right, so let me change colors here. Um, this is our C. It's negative. Negative means different signs. Different signs mean one's positive, one's negative. Um, we need X and X for X squared, but notice I leave a space because now we have two numbers to look at. 3, which has factors of 1 and 3, which are what we have to use. So down here, do my little A and C's. 3 and 1 are going to be my a's, c is 5, the factors of 5 are 1 and 5, which I have to use. I have to use 1 and 5. One of them goes uh, with the 1, one goes with the 3. Now, I need 14 in the middle, and I have to subtract, so I need a number bigger than 14. Well, this forces me to put the 5 with the 3, and the 1 goes with the 1. So wait, find the products, we have 1 and 15. 
15 is bigger than 14. I need a number bigger than 14. Now, since 14 is positive, the positive sign must be with the bigger number, positive 15. That means the negative goes with the 1. And negative 1 plus 15 is plus 14. Boom. I got my 14. That's what I needed. So now I'll bring the signs up. And I'll put my C's in first. This C, this 1, goes after the negative. This C, 5, goes after the positive. The 1 went in the outer spot, so this 1 has to go in the outer spot. The 5 went in the inner spot, so the 3 must go in the inner spot. And here is my factored form. Now, let's check this by foiling. I just, I just want to go over quickly how we do this with that number out in front. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to handle the FOIL first. We're going to ignore the 2. So x times 3x is 3x squared. x times 3x is 3x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x or negative 1x. 5 times 3 is positive 15 x, and 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. We'll combine the middle term here, 3x squared, negative x plus 15x is positive 14x minus 5. And now here comes that 2, and it was in front of a parenthesis, so it needs to continue to be in front of a parenthesis, and we multiply everything by the 2. 6x squared plus 28x minus 10. And that's exactly what I started with so I know that I'm correct. And what I squared up here is the correct factored form. Okay, so here's our next problem we'll look at. Um, this says 18x squared minus 45x plus 25. So again, there's an A, so the first thing I'll look for is a common factor. Um, 18, um, well, I'll look at 25. I know 5 goes into 25, but 5 does not go into 18, so I do not believe that there is a common factor here. Don't. Okay, so now... We have to look at C. C is positive. So then we look at the B, because C being positive means same signs. So we look for that sign in the middle, negative, negative. I need my X and X for X squared. And now I look at the factors of my numbers, 18, 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, right, 4, no, 5, no, 25. Factors are 1 and 25 and 5 and 5. Now, I told you guys in class, I do not think that you'll use 1 and 25. So let's assume that we're going to use 5 and 5 as our C's. That's nice because um, any A's that we put in, you only have to check them once because if you switch them, it'd still be 5 and 5. So we need 45 in the middle. And the signs are the same, so we're going to add to get 45. Well, look here. 18 times 5 is bigger than 45. It can't be. 9 times 5 is 45. It can't be. So I think it has to be 3 and 6. I think it has to be. Let's try. 3 here, 6 there. Again, it doesn't matter because they're both 5s. We get 15. We get 30. The signs are both negative, so minus minus gives us a negative 45. Boom. That's what I wanted. Okay? So it was 5 and 5, and it was 3 and 6. The signs transfer up. I put my 5's after the negatives. And let's say this 5 is this one, in the inner. So that means this 3 has to go in the inner. Let's say this 5 was the outer. So that means the 6 has to go in the outer. And there is your factored form. 6x minus 5, 3x minus 5. Okay, here's our next problem, 11x squared minus 44. Very first thing I see, there is no bx term. So I'm thinking difference of perfect squares. However, 44 and 11 are not perfect squares, but you have an a. Is there a common factor? Yes. 11 is your common factor. Pull it out, and what you're left with has to be multiplied by 11 to get what you started with. So it's going to be 11 times x squared, gives you 11x squared, and 11 times negative 4 gives you negative 44. Here is pulling out the common factor. And now x squared and 4. That's a little better. x squared is x squared. 4 is 2 squared. 
So now, 11's out in front still, common factor. Two parentheses, signs are different, and my x's go first, and my 2's go last. And there's the factored form. Okay, the next problem we have here, um, 100x squared minus 1. Again, no bx. So when there's no bx, I'm thinking that I'm going to do a difference of perfect squares. Now, there is an a, so let's see if there's a common factor. We need to find a common factor between 100 and 1. There is none. 1 has no common factors to pull out, so you're done. So these must be perfect squares. Well, 100 is 10 squared, and x squared is x squared. 10x squared. 1 is 1 squared. Here are my uh, perfect squares. So when I draw my parentheses, different signs, 10x goes in front, 1 goes in back. Now let's check this real fast by foiling. So we'll do the first, 10x times 10x is 100, 10 times 10 is 100, and x and x is x squared. 10x times negative 1 is negative 10x. 1 times 10x is positive 10x, and 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Combine your middle terms, 100x squared, negative 10 plus 10, they cancel, and then minus 1. And that's exactly what we started with. So this first section, this is factor. Factor. Okay, here's our, our first question in the solve, um, the solve set of questions. Solve. Uh, number one says x squared plus 9x minus 10 equals 0. Remember, to solve, it must say equals 0. If it does not say equals 0, you need to get it to say equals 0. Well, here we have equals 0, so we can begin. We can begin by factoring. There is no a, so I just look at c. C is negative, different signs. One's plus, one's minus. My x squared is x and x. Remember, no a, so no numbers. And now I look at 10. And I say the factors of 10 are 1 and 10, 2 and 5, 3 no, 4 no, 5's up there. So it's these two sets. I need a difference of 9. Signs are different, so I need a difference of 9. Well, that's 1 and 10. The 9 is positive, so the bigger number, the 10, must be positive. But now you need to take it a step further, because this equation is equal to 0, so we need to set each parenthesis equal to 0 and solve for x. Okay, so here in this first one, x plus 10, we're going to subtract 10 from both sides. x equals negative 10. Over here, we're going to add 1. Again, if you want to check, uh, and we'll just do one here, you can always plug it in. Let's, let's check one real fast. Okay, we're going to check this one. So what you do is you plug it in. 1 squared plus 9 times 1 minus 10 equals 0. And you check to see if this comes out uh, same on both sides. Well, 1 squared is 1. 9 times 1 is 9 minus 10 equals 0. This is 1 plus 9 is 10, and 10 minus 10 is 0. So you know that that solution is correct. And you can do the same thing for the negative 10. So you can always plug them back in to check. Okay, here's our next problem. It says x squared equals 5x. Um, it does not say equals 0, so we must get it to say equals 0. We need to get rid of this 5x. Move it over here. So let's subtract 5x from both sides. These do not combine, so it's just x squared minus 5x equals, and now the 5x is cancel. There's my 0. But now I have another observation to make. There's no c. It says x squared minus 5x. There's no c. Well, think about this. Say it to yourself, x squared minus 5x. I said something twice. I said x twice. Pull out an x. When you pull out an x, you need to write what you're left with. If I were to multiply by x so that I get x squared minus 5, well, I think the first term is x because x and x is x squared, and this would be a minus 5. This is factored. So now we set x equal to 0, and there's one of your answers, x equals 0. We set x minus 5 equal to 0, and we solve by adding 
5 to both sides. x equals 5. So this is a tricky one where there is no c. Um, but there's your solution. Okay, here's our next problem. Um, it says 12x squared plus 62x equals 22. All right, so remember, it must say equals 0. It doesn't. So we need to get rid of this 22 by subtracting it, and we'll subtract it over here as well. Got to do it to both sides. This 22 does not combine with any of those other terms. 12x squared plus 62x minus 22 equals, and over here the 22s cancel. There's my e equals 0. Notice the order I put it in too. x squared, x, and then the number. Now that you have an a, now you have to look for a common factor. And I think there is one here. The common factor is 2. So when you have an equation, what we do with that common factor is we take each term and divide by 2. 6x squared plus 31x minus 11 equals 0. And now here is our trinomial, 6x squared plus 31x minus 11, that we are going to factor. All right. So I look at the C. The C is negative, which means different signs. One's plus, one's minus. I need my x and x for x squared, but notice I leave a space because I have to look at my factors of 6, which are 1 and 6, and 2 and 3. Choice. My factors of 11, which are 1 and 11. No choices there. I know that my C's have to be 1 and 11. Okay. Well, let's think about the A's. Again, remember I said uh, 1 and 6, you might not use um, 1 and 6. And we need to get to 31. We need to get up to 31, so something close to 31. Well, if we take the 3 and multiply it with the 11, that's 33. So let's do that. So let's choose 2 and 3, put the 3 with the 11, the 2 with the 1, and let's see what happens. 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 11 is 33. I have different signs, so 1 plus 1 minus. The 31 is positive, so the bigger gets the positive. That means the 2 gets the negative. And when I do this problem, negative 2 plus 33 is positive 31. Check. That's what I wanted. Bring your signs up. Plus here, minus there. Fill in your C's. The C's go after the signs. So this 1 goes after the negative. This 11 goes after the positive. The 1 is in the outer, so the 2 must go in the outer. The 11 is in the inner, so the 3 must go in the inner. And there are your two factors. Now this problem is not done because it's equal to 0. Each parenthesis set equal to 0. And it's a two-step process. First, you subtract or add the number. And now you divide by what's in front of the x. And you get x is negative 11 halves. Or you can get the decimal, which I think is negative 5.5, but negative 11 halves is OK. Over here, we're going to add 1 to both sides. 3x equals 1. And divide by 3. And we get x equals 1 third. And here are the two solutions for this um, problem. OK, our last solve problem here, um, 9x squared minus 25 equals 0. Remember, it must say equals 0. It does, so we can begin. Um, we look for a common factor here, 9 and 25. Nope, no common factor. So I think this is the difference of perfect squares because, look, you have no bx term. So it should be a difference of perfect squares. And 9 and 25 naturally are perfect squares. 3 squared is 9. x squared is x squared. So that's 3x squared. 25 is 5 squared. That's 5 squared. Our parentheses have different signs. The 3x's go in the first spots. The 5's go in the last. And here are two factors. 3x plus 5, 3x minus 5. This problem is equal to 0, so each parenthesis must be set equal to 0. We need to find the x values that we want. So we're going to subtract 5 on both sides. And we're going to divide by 3 here. 
x equals negative 5 thirds. Over here, we're going to add 5 to both sides and divide by 3, and we get positive 5 thirds. So when you have a difference of perfect squares, remember, you get the same answer, just one's positive, one's negative. So in summary, for the solving ones, has to equal 0 before you can factor. Okay, so here is the last kind of problem you'll see. Um, I'm going to give you a shape. It's going to be a rectangle. Um, I'll give you dimensions, uh, 2x minus 1 inches, x inches here, and I'll tell you the area is 45 inches squared. And I want the dimensions. So I want the dimensions of this rectangle. So what you will do is you will take your area formula, which is area equals length times width or base times height, however you learned it, and you're going to take your two dimensions, multiply them, x times 2x minus 1, and you're going to set that equal to the area that they give you of 45. Now, this requires you to multiply it out. Multiply this out, 2x squared, I'm um, sorry, 2x squared minus x equals 45. So we have multiplied out the left side. And now we need to get 0 on the right side. Remember, you can't start solving this until 0 is on the right side. So you multiply first, and then we subtract 45 to get 0 on both sides. 2x squared minus x minus 45 equals 0. And now we look to factor. Okay, I see an A. I see an A, so I'm looking for a common factor first. Um, this is a 1, no common factors. So now we look at C. C is negative, that means different signs. 1's plus, 1's minus. X and X for X squared. And I look at 2, which has factors of 1 and 2, which are brilliant because I have to use them. I look at 45, which has a couple sets of factors, 1 and 45, 2 no, 3 and 15, 4 no, 5 and 9, 6 no, 7 no, 8 no, 9 up there. So here are my choices. Now, I want to get a 1 in the middle, and it's a difference because the signs are different. So if I look at probably the two closest numbers, which are 5 and 9, now how do I do this? Well, let's... Think of 5 times 2 is 10, and 10 is close to 9. So let's put the 5 with the 2, the 9 with the 1. And again, you might have to try a couple different options. 9 times 1 is 9, 2 times 5 is 10. I want a negative in the middle. I have a negative and a positive to work with. The bigger number must be negative. So I do positive, 10, uh, positive 9 minus 10 is negative 1. And that's exactly what I want in the middle. Bring your signs up. Put the C's in first, x plus 9, um, x minus 5. The 9 went in the inner, so the 1 must go in the inner. The 5 went in the outer, so the 2 must go in the outer. And there are my two factors, 2x plus 9, x minus 5. Over here, I'm going to take them and set each of them equal to 0. So 2x plus 9 equals 0 x minus 5 equals 0. Here, I will subtract 9. 2x equals negative 9, and I'll divide by 2. And I'll do a decimal because it's a word problem, negative 4.5. Here, I'll add 5. I'll get x equals 5. Now, notice, one of your side length is x, so x cannot be negative. So we cross the negative 4.5 out, meaning x has to be 5. Now, if I want the dimensions, I want you to plug it up in here, okay, and find what they are. So we know that one of them is x inches, so that's just going to be 5 inches by... And here, if you plug 5 in here, 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 minus 1 is 9 inches. And 5 times 9 is 45 inches squared. And here's your dimensions. So hopefully this video helped. Again, practice makes perfect with factoring. So um, I hope you're prepared uh, for Thursday's quiz. We'll see you then.